Okay, today I want to do a little video on to show people how to cut down ski poles. I've done this before in a set of poles. Matter of fact, here's the set that I did. Cut these down a few years ago for my wife. And uh, just got myself a new set of poles. These are the uh, Lakey Vision Venom racing poles. They will replace my older Lakey poles, which I actually really enjoyed. Lakey has a special system here where you don't have to put your hands through the straps all the time. And, I particularly like it, so I uh, got a new set of poles, really didn't need them, but hey, what the heck, right? Anyway, uh, you got to start off, you need a couple of tools to do this. The first tool I think you really ought to have, you can't use a hacksaw, you ought to have a tubing cutter, you got to be able to cut the, the poles and make a nice clean cut on those. A hacksaw will do, I'm going to use a tubing cutter today. The second thing you need to know is how short the poles have to be. Well. I have my wife's existing poles right here. Uh, this pole seems to work for her. I've measured it up. Uh, typically the way you, you do poles is you hold them upside down with your hand under the basket and your, your arm should be about parallel to the floor with a right angle here at your elbow. Um, so I'm going to use the old pole as a template for how to cut down the new pole, so to speak, or the new pole for her. And as you can see here, in the difference in height as I match the bottoms up, Got about, looks like I've got to cut uh, close to three and a half inches off this pole, which might be a bit much. Uh, given that this Lakey pole is a special pole with a bend in it, designed to move the pole forward in your stance. Uh, I'm going to do as much as I can. The first thing I need to do here is mark these poles so I can see how far up the handle they go uh, to, to realize where my last point is on this in, in terms of when I want to cut this off, how far down it can go. Can't get it past this bend here because the you don't want the handle on the bend. So I've got a little sharpie here. What I'll do is just uh, make a little mark on the back side and I'll make one on the front side as well just uh, just as a reference point. I'm going to do that on both poles. Now the next question is you got to get these handles off, and uh, these can be kind of tough. And you know, the question was, how am I going to get these things off? Uh, they just didn't want to come off. So I did a little bit of reading, and some poles, if you look at these older poles here, have a screw at the top. And what you have to do is take that screw out first, and that goes into a little plug inside the pole that expands and holds the grip on tight. The Lakey poles don't have that, so the question is, how do I do this? Well, some suggested heating them with a heat gun. Didn't want to go that method, so I want to try hot water first. I'm going to run the hot water, get it nice and hot, take this, of course I don't need the strap here on it. And right now this thing's pretty tight on there. I'll let this water get good and hot. And I'm going to start to just kind of run this through the water gradually. Let the grip get warm. I think it's the real important part. We'll see what happens. Also want to get the poles to the pole on the inside. It gets, gets warmed up as well. If you bring these in from the outside, it might take a little longer. All right, let me give it a try here. See if I've got it warmed up enough to get it off. Yep, it's twisting. It comes right off. That's nice. I'm going to do the other pole the same way. And there we go, the other pole came off really nice and easy as well. So uh, that actually worked out quite well. Okay, if you remember, when we compared the two poles, uh, it looked like it was about three and a half inches that I needed to cut off of this larger pole in order to suit what my wife needs on the, on the, on for her size. Looking at the pole, if I cut three and a half inches off of this, I'm going to have this grip somewhere down here in this bend, so I'm not going to be able to get that much off of it. And if you look here at my mark, you're going to see this grip on the upper end, or the lower end here, I guess I'll call it, the, the end that extends further down, is right there. So you can see the pole extends up that far into the, into the grip. So it looks like, you know, the furthest we're going to get this down is down to about here. It really tells me it's about two inches I can cut off of that. And just to double check something, I want to double check and make sure that 
my, my penetration to the grip is similar, just in case one of them wasn't put in far enough, and uh, sure enough, those marks are, are consistent. Okay, well, the next thing, throw away a little clutter here. So before I cut here, what I want to do is take a measurement, uh, and I'm going to take a measurement from the end of the pole to where my mark is, and note that it's uh, three and three quarter inches. So what I have to know here, and again, if you have a straight pole, you're not going to have that problem. So if you decide how much you want to cut off, you cut it off, because these have this curve in them, it makes it a little bit more complicated. But uh, I'm going to mark the furthest point down on the pole here, where I think this grip can go in terms of without actually uh, becoming a problem for this curve. And I think that furthest point is, is really right about here. So I'll mark that spot. And then I want to measure up three and three quarter inches and that'll be my cut spot. There's my cut right there. And to make it simple on the other pole instead of measuring and putting that point there I'm just going to measure my cut spot and it looks like I'm cutting three inches off here. So I'm going to measure three inches here on the other pole and make the cuts there. So now it's time to make the cut. It's actually quite simple. You got your tubing cutter, you got your mark here, you line up your tubing cutter, tighten it up a bit just to get it snug. Make sure it's lined up with your mark. Tighten it down a little bit and you just start to roll this around and tighten it up a little bit after each rotation and gradually you get a nice clean cut here on your pole. And I believe these tubing cutters actually will work on composite poles as well. Again, if you don't have a tubing cutter, probably no need to run out and buy one. You can probably just use a hacksaw but you can see how nicely that cut it. And then I've got this little reamer here that I can go out and kind of finish out the end. Clean that up a little bit. And now it's time to put my grip back on. So make sure I get it oriented right. And I'm going to slide it back down onto the pole. And I'll give it a little coaxing by pushing it on the floor to make sure when you do that, you're not pushing the pole to the point where you're going to stick yourself with it. And now we have our pole. If we compare our lengths, you can see we're just a tad bit longer on this cut down pole. We haven't infringed on this area here. Again, if you have a straight pole, really just want to measure the difference. Take your tubing cutter out, cut it off. And uh, the big thing was the, the water. The water really made it simple, the hot water. Some people will try a heat gun or a hair dryer. Uh, I really wouldn't want to ruin my grips or take the chance of doing that with that. Let's try water first. Heck, they're out in the snow and the, the elements all the time anyway, so water's not going to hurt them. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something.